Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to begin exploring some of the you know, abilities and skills of using the Python language primarily for uh, data analysis and statistical reasons. So as you can see here, I'm already, lo uh, not logged in, but I've already opened up Spider. This is one of the IDEs that are commonly used with Python. And you can see here off to the right, you can see I have my interactive Python. This is where I can type in code individually for, you know, step-by-step -step procedures. And then off to the left, I have my scripting area where I can, you know, save my code to run all at once if I so desire. Now, if you use Spider for the first time, you might see two other panels commonly available. And that is the variable explorer, like so right here, and also the project, uh, project pane right here these two often when you first open it they often are, are available at the same time but I close those because they they don't really benefit me for what I'm trying to do so I'm going to close these again the project thing just allows you to see the different files that are available and the variable explorer allows you to see what variables you've created but normally I keep these closed for most of my purposes are really really small so in this video in particular we're going to focus on how to make a function using Python script so a function always begins with DEF. I guess that means define. And then you have to give the function a name. And then you follow by parentheses. Now, depending on what the purpose of the function is, you might have to put things inside these parentheses right here. We call them arguments. But for my first example, we're not going to use that. And so one of the benefits of making function is that it allows you to reuse code without having to retype it over and over and over and over again. That's the primary purpose. So going back to my example here, so far I have a simple function called example. And so once you make your parentheses, you follow with a colon. And then now notice how it's automatically indented. What is underneath this in the second line is going to be exactly what the function does. And Spider will even give you hints uh, about things you need to do because um, it's saying, hey, something weird is happening here because I haven't defined what the function does. So this function is going to be a very, very basic function. We're going to use the print function inside the function called example. And this is what we're going to print. My first function in Python oops so simple enough now notice the different colorings here the blue means define stands for define purple normally represents some sort of a function green represents some sort of a string a string is just a, a, a piece of text if you will and notice how I put the string inside quotation marks this way Python will not try to analyze it but just you know, spit it out and repeat it like the way I wrote it. It's a way to define that, hey, this is a string because it's inside text. Whereas if it's not inside, if it's not inside, um, if it's not inside quotation marks, Python will not know exactly what it is. Is it a function? Is it, is it a module? Is it a class? Et cetera, et cetera. So now that I'm done with my very, very simple uh, function here, I highlight everything and I press F9 to load it into the system. And so now I'm able to use my actual function what do I do I call it and so if you saw what I did I just press example and I put the parentheses after it and the function did its job the purpose of my example function was to create something or to print the string my first function in Python very very catchy very very amazing but now see whenever I call this function in the future I no longer have to type my first function in Python is done for me automatically by calling the example function very beautiful now of course this is not all you can do naturally you can have arguments and I kind of mentioned that already I want to give you one example here real quick so we're going to make a new function called example number two that's what it is and inside we're going to put the argument called info now when you create an argument you can use whatever word you want uh, but normally you want the, 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 the name you give it to make sense for the context. So for me, this makes sense for me. This is how my mind works. And so now what does this function will do is the same thing as last time. It'll print, but it'll print whatever argument I put in that represents info. That's what it'll do. So if you're a little bit confused, let me just give you an example here. Let me load this, press F9. And now I'm going to call example number two. And inside this, I'm going to put 
this oops is cool so all this information I put here represents my argument info so here I'm not limited to only printing uh, my first function in Python because now that I have an argument whatever I put in place of the argument that is what this second function example number two will print so if I go down here and press enter you can see it did exactly what I wanted it printed my info argument which in this particular situation was this is cool now of course I can change this maybe I just want to say cool and so again now this time the, the string cool represents the argument info I press enter I get what I want so you can see the power and the variety that can be used with functions and how they allow you to do many different things now another thing that you can do of course is you can set a default value for a particular argument inside a function so I'm going to modify my example number two function real quick so this time the default value for info will be this hey you forgot to give a value that's what we're going to put here so in other words if the person does not type anything in for the argument info they will get this message so I go back up here I load my function like so and now I just do example 2 I don't put anything in there and notice what happened it gives me back the default value and again I can make this default value whatever I want if I so desire but in this particular situation, I use the default value to remind the user of my function that you forgot to put a value inside the parentheses. That was my purpose there. Now, of course, functions are not limited to only printing strings and text. You can also, of course, naturally use them for, you know, calculations and other things of that nature. So for my last function, I'm going to create a function called just add. And what is add going to do? Well, it's going to take two arguments v1 and v2 nothing amazing here put my colon there and what are we going to do we're going to print again because we love to print and we're just going to do v1 plus v2 that's all we're going to do nothing fancy here but i just created a function that adds together my two arguments that are inside the parentheses here that's all it does so now i highlight this and press f9 to load it into my um ide into spider and now I call it by saying add and I'll just do you know 20 and 30 now 30 now notice how I use commas after each argument that's how you separate them and I press enter and I get the number 50 which makes complete sense because 20 plus 30 is 50 so this is just some of the power of what you can do with function and this is just an introduction there is so much more that can be done but for those of you who are new to how Python works and how things happen in this particular programming language, this is more than enough for now. So in this video, we took a look at a little bit at you know, the Python language and the use of the spider IDE, and we did an introduction into using functions. Functions are a way to use your code more efficiently by allowing you to reuse code without having to type it several times. We learned how to make one, and we made several examples of strings, and one example that was looking at calculating uh, values with numbers. So my name is Darren Thomas, and I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you for listening.